All right, folks, uh, Mr. Hansen here. I'm gonna go with, through with you guys how to do this um, extrude exercise. So if you're having trouble just following the directions, I'm gonna go into a little more uh, detail about how to get this figured out. Um, I am gonna skip the first couple slides in this uh, exercise, uh, just because it's using those basic sketching tools. So you should be able to you know, create a on-shape on -shape document. Um, the sketch is you know, a rectangle and a line. Um, I'm gonna get started there. So do make sure you hit the green check mark to save your sketch. And we're going to talk about how to take this two-dimensional sketch and turn it into a 3D part. Um, and so the most common tool that you're probably going to use to do that is what's called an extrude. Um, so it's the first choice up here. You know, once you've saved your sketch, you should have access to this 3D tool menu. Uh, the first option is an extrude. The sh uh, shortcut for that is Shift-E. Uh, so if you click that, uh, what it'll let you do is select any 2D surfaces uh, to extrude. So let me go ahead and click everything in this rectangle, show you kind of how this works. Um, kind of hard to see from a top-down view. So I'm going to right-click, I'm going to rotate around, and you can see what that extrude has done. It's taken that two-dimensional uh, sketch and sort of stretched it um, in a third dimension to make a solid object. Uh, so, I mean, it's an extrude is simple as that. Uh, there are a lot of options here for you know, changing how your extrude works. Uh, the one you need to know right now is what's called the depth. Uh, that's just the thickness of uh, my extrude. Um, you can set that to, you know, any number you want. Uh, in this case, we need 1.25 inches. Uh, now, you see what I've extruded here doesn't quite look like what it's supposed to. It looks like I've added this extra uh, corner here. So I'm going to rotate around to the bottom here, and I'm going to click that corner, um, and that looks looks like it should based on the directions. Uh, so that's my first extrude. Um, simple enough, take a sketch, stretch it out, you got something 3D. Uh, let's take a look at the next step. Um, so the next step is to add a sketch directly to this part. So do make sure you your extrude one is saved. Um, and what I'm gonna need to do now is rotate around. So right click to rotate around so I can see this back object. Um, the nice thing about sketching is that you can sketch on any flat surface. It doesn't have to be one of those three default planes. Um, you can sketch on like any flat surface of an extrude. So I am going to do just that. I'm going to create a new sketch. Uh, so the key is Shift S. Uh, and you'll see this sketch is going to be attached to that back edge of my part, since that's what I had uh, selected. Uh, now, to actually make my sketch, to make sure it's oriented correctly, um, I need to be viewed viewing normal to this plane. Uh, so. I'm going to rotate around to the front view because uh, that's going to let me do my sketch uh, as the directions intend. Uh, and the sketch is pretty simple. We're going to start out with one, two, three, four, five lines. Uh, so let me do that. Uh, we got a line going up. I'll make sure that's snapped to the uh, vertical. We got a line going out in an angle. We got a horizontal line. Make sure it's snapped to the horizontal. Uh, and before you click this input, last endpoint of this line, make sure the you see how the uh, rightmost edge is highlighted. That'll make sure that uh, when I draw this uh, line on the right, it is in fact vertical. If you don't get it vertical, you can always go back and add a vertical constraint. Now I am going to go and add a line across the bottom so that it's completely enclosed. Uh, looking at the next step, uh, we're going to add some construction lines and a circle. Uh, so I'm going to hit Q so that my construction line tool is selected. I'm going to draw a uh, horizontal construction line, so make sure it's snapped horizontally. And I'm going to draw another vertical construction line. Now be careful here, because this is actually supposed to be attached at the midpoint. And so if you zoom in a little bit, uh, if you mouse over your line, you should see once you've got the midpoint selected, an orange highlight box and a midpoint constraint pop up. If you click there, uh, that'll make sure that point is, in fact, attached to the midpoint of the line on top. I drop this down. Uh, make sure it is snapped to the vertical. All right. Uh, last but not least, we're going to add a circle to this. So C for circle or click the button at the top. Uh, do make sure the center of your circle uh, is attached to this uh, point in the middle. And you'll notice it highlights when, you're, you, when you selected that point. So I'm going to uh, make that circle. 
Uh, now again, it doesn't matter if what you've drawn right now isn't exactly like what's in the directions for the part we're actually trying to make, because uh, we are going to go in now and add uh, some, you know, check our constraints and add some dimensions. So you probably want to make sure all your constraints are in place. Uh, you can, in your sketch tool, hit show constraints. Um, and that'll, you know, show them. I think it looks pretty good to me. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the next step. But if you are in fact missing something, you can go back and take a look at that. Uh, dimensions, pretty straightforward. Hit D for the dimensions tool. Uh, I'm going to start with the biggest dimension. So I'm going to start with this four on the right side. So going from this top line to the bottom edge here, uh, that's supposed to be four inches. Let's do the same thing. Uh, this construction line to the bottom edge should be 2.5. And again, as you add these dimensions, it should fix you know how things look. It should get closer to what uh, we expect it to look like. Let me fix this circle. That should be 1.25. Move that all right. And last but not least, this angle uh, should be 30 degrees. So remember, uh, an angle is a measurement between two lines that are you know share a point, um, a vertex. So I'm going to make that 30 degrees. And if you've done things correctly, you should see uh, all our blue lines have turned to black lines, meaning this thing is fully constrained. There's nothing else I can add to this. Uh, add to the existing geometry. So that usually means we're ready to move to the next step. Uh, make sure you hit that green check mark to save your sketch. And if you rotate around, uh, you can see that sketch is you know, attached to the back edge of the part we already created, which is exactly what we're looking for. Because we're going to do a second extrude um, to add some material to this part. So I'm going to select my extrude tool. So Shift E uh, if you're using keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to select the region uh, that I want, which is this right here. Um, now that looks like the correct region, but if you look at what's going on here, it looks like it's extruding the wrong direction. Instead of going in towards the part, it's going out towards the back of the part. Uh, and you'll see down in the parts list, uh, I got two separate parts selected here. Um, so the first part is the original thing I created. And the second part is what I'm extruding uh, right now. Uh, so the trick to fixing this, if you look in the up here uh, in the extrude menu, there's a new option. Uh, new does just that. It creates a new part from an extrude. But what we want to do here is we want to add the thing that I'm extruding to part one. So I'm going to click add. Uh, red is generally an error message. And obviously, if you look at these two parts, uh, if this second extrude is going out like this, there's <coughs> excuse me, nothing in common between these two parts. We can't merge them together into one piece. Uh, they only overlap at this you know, one dimensional line. Uh, easy enough to fix. You can hit this arrow or you can hit this arrow up here and that'll change the direction of the extrude. You want to make sure those parts overlap, which they do now that I fix that direction. And you also notice that this is merged together into one single part, which is what we want. Um, you can control what merges with what once you get into like complicated stuff by using this merge scope. Uh, but for right now, uh, that's enough for creating a single part. So again, you should be able to now like select the whole part from the parts menu and everything should be highlighted. Um, now, we should be at a point where we can run this little self check. Um, to get information about a 3D object, there's a little scale in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, if you click that, it'll pull up properties of a three-dimensional part. It'll run through calculations for you, uh, calculate volume, calculate surface area. Uh, if you've got a material assigned to this, and we'll take a look at how to do that later, it'll tell you the weight and other properties of this object as well. So go ahead and check your answer, see if you got your design right.